Hello, my name is Philip Mayer. I'm an Associate Consultant for Salika International. Today what we're going to do is have a conversation with Hafer, who is the CEO and founder of Salika International, and how this conversation is going to go with a series of questions. Okay, so we'll... Hello, Hafer. Hi, Philip, thank you. We'll, we'll start off uh, with the first question. Uh, Hafer, can you pitch our service as if you were in a sales meeting? Right. So uh, to explain something about what Silica, what we do at Silica. What Silica does is um, mainly is translation. So we are giving linguistic support to business to business. So businesses such as we do legal uh, linguistic support, we do medical, uh, IT, marketing, market research. Uh, medical market research companies and the public sector. We deal with individuals as well. Being uh, specialized in linguistic support, we actually offer training in um, other languages as well. So we offer multilingual uh, courses. So, for example, if the recipient are not uh, English speakers or the the English is not the first language. We offer the um, the courses in uh, based on English standard, but we could deliver them uh, with both English and the local language of the of the recipients. We uh, train trainers and we train uh, translators as well and analysts. Uh, so the training goes uh, across the board for businesses for. Um, market research agencies and um, medical market research companies who deals with project managers so we teach them how to manage their projects in terms of translators and in terms of uh, data analysis and tabulation the other part of the business is that we offer education and uh, basically an affiliation with uh, language schools international language schools and, and uh, academies and colleges. We uh, have um, associates with, within these organizations or academies and we offer the, uh, their courses and their services through Silica uh, to individuals here and abroad. The a smaller part of the business is the consultancy. So we offer businesses consultancy uh, on so we guide them small businesses startups and uh, other businesses who have problems within the organizations so we offer them uh, guidance and uh, on problem solving or any problem they have within the company so we guide them through the processes of how to solve the problems in terms of maybe um, access to finances or um, uh, HR problems or uh, basically any conflict within the company or the sales department if there's any problem with within any departments we could help them with that so we give them an assessment and then we we try to solve the problems for them by guiding them through uh, processes of how to overcome the problems next question is how do you see the company changing in the next two years and how do you see yourself creating that change Right, okay, my vision for the company started three years ago and my vision was is to put the company in the stock market after five years. Uh, three years in, uh, I am, uh, what well, I think is that we are moving uh, in the right direction and things are going really well. So the next two years we are in the implementation uh, stage and I think the next two years are going to be very, very successful. We have built a very, very strong foundation for the company and it's a corporate now which, with the branches abroad, even the bank and the, uh, we're trying to get the uh, company house to recognize us as a corporate because we're dealing internationally and we have a branches abroad. So hopefully the next two years is going to be um, fulfilled to this dream that I had. How do I do that change is by working really hard, um, uh, building a, a good team of work here and abroad and implementing uh, all the skills that we have 
uh, gathered all over the years to actually to um, put them in, in, in a, a, a forceful way to uh, speed the process of uh, development and innovation. We're looking for new ideas, we're looking for uh, software, we are members in so many um, organizations and we are affiliating with other organizations and academies to enhance the um, the uh, education side and for training uh, as well we are uh, verified trainers uh, uh, and we are registered we are in the process of registering as a, as a recognized training company for market research and translation we are a members of uh, BIDIA, uh, the British Health uh, Care Association and we are uh, a company partner with Market Research Society as well in the UK and, and around the world. Basically, uh, employing everything that will drive the company to, to the aim. That's what I'm doing and I'm concentrating on that very, very heavily. Excellent. Thank you. Very comprehensive answer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Uh, hey, for the next question, is sort of a bit of fun, but it's, it has a serious side to it. Can you give us one word that describes you the best? I think persistent is the word because I don't give up and uh, stubbornness. I'm very, very stubborn. The, more, the harder things get, the more driven I am and I, the more defiance I am. Uh, I don't like the life challenges. I, I don't like them, so I oppose them. And instead of walking away from problem, I go, I go forceful forward to the problem. So persistence is the word that. Okay. The next question is, what, what are your three biggest accomplishments? My biggest ac accomplishment, which is my children, I, that is the only accomplishment I have achieved in the life. Uh, bringing them up properly, making them professionals, uh, very fine people, uh, useful to society, and I'm very, very proud of them. So this is the only thing I, I can recognize as a, an achievement uh, and as accomplishment because anything else I have achieved is, uh, I consider it day to day. Uh, so one thing I have the, is rec the recognition of the uh, women of excellence uh, in 2017 by the House of Lords and the Women Economic Forum, to me, uh, was uh, an accomplishment because it's a rec recognition of how uh, it's for my life, uh, basically, journey, and uh, based on my achievement in life, mainly with my children, how I brought them up, and, and they have uh, recognized me as a businesswoman, as a self-made, uh, you know, uh, successful uh, woman, but uh, mainly I concentrated on basically my main success is my children. Next question. What other CEOs do you look up to? I look at CEOs who started from nothing, because I started from nothing. Uh, I had I was armed with knowledge and um, I studied a lot and this and that. But that doesn't studying does not give you uh, the uh, the uh, munition to actually to be successful in life. However, I think there are many many uh, leaders, uh, business leaders in the world, who have started from nothing uh, with no education as well but they had it in their mind it's literally it's the uh, basically it's natural in them that they are leaders they are achievers and like Richard Branson like uh, people even like chefs of the world that started from nothing and they became really 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 big in business so I admire these people not the people who inherited the business or inherited some money and then they played with it and uh, called themselves successful. Uh, Hafer, tell us some things that you like and some things that you dislike about your current position. Well, I like uh, responsibility, being responsible for the business. Uh, 
are, uh, you know, all the organizations, like, it's, it's an achievement, like, give me a reason to basically get up in the morning. So that's what I like about the being in this position. Uh, having been in this position for a long time, it's just getting, um, like, a daily routine now. So if I don't get up in the morning and I'm, I'm having something, then I will uh, basically feel empty and feel like I'm useless that day. I don't want to have a day off without thinking about the business. Um, I like success. If, if things happen uh, the way I want, I'm, I'm really happy with that as well. So that makes me happy. Achievement, obviously. Uh, security for me and my family and for other families that I am helping in opening homes for by giving them you know opportunity to work for the company and all that so i'm i'm just it's really a, a bit of everything it's not just a selfish a selfish reason it's uh contributing to society uh contributing to my family and contributing to myself as a person as well so i have a reason to live basically okay. what i dislike responsibility again and the hustle of it and dealing with people uh, trying to be somebody different all the time, you know, like people are getting very difficult. I am very old school, and the people are not understand. Even the old school people, they don't understand me. Maybe I'm th I think faster than people, and I'm frustrated with them because they they not to my speed. I know that is not professional sometimes, but I just just want things to to go my way all the time. I don't know why. But I don't see why not, you know, like this is what I can't comprehend. Why not things go right, why people do the wrong things. Uh, what I dislike as well is failure. Um, you know, like business go wrong all the time and I, and I worry about it, sleepless nights and I worry about everything. It's a very, very, very big burden on me and put stress on me as well and that contributes to my relationship negatively to my relationship with my at home and with my friends and with myself as well. So I'm sometimes I'm always stressed. Uh, that's what I don't like about it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, explain the rationale behind each of your career moves. Every decision I took in my career moves uh, is calculated. Uh, so when I was studying, I was hoping to be, you know, something in my field, which is statistics and accounts. Then I went into teaching because it was an opportunity and I took it. And then when things changed personally for me, I took the decision to go away from teaching and go into business. Uh, very, I thought about it very long and I was very uh, calculated with it just to basically try to, uh, I won't call it a sacrifice, I call it a compromise to actually to accommodate for my children being a single parent and I wanted to make sure that I don't go into business or into work every day and I ignore my children. So I thought if I go into business, well, that will give me more freedom, uh, time-wise, not like more freedom to be with them, not not to work, because it's very very hard work. It's twenty-four hour uh, mission basically every day, but at least I could work while I'm seeing to my children. So it was uh, everything was calculated. Everything was for a reason. I never took a decision in my business without a reason. Even going abroad now and opening the branch abroad, it was for a reason because it was for a selfish reason and something to contribute to society because I can see in these countries people are uh, struggling with education, with attitude towards education and there's a lot of uh, people who wants to educate their children but they can't afford it because society is poor Government are not paying attention and people are uh, basically striving to uh, get their children somewhere in life because most of the people are unemployed or because they don't have the skills or the education skills to actually to uh, 
be able to work. So I thought this is a gap in the market which is going to benefit me and mainly benefit the society that I am going to go into, whether it's in Egypt and or in Iraq. Okay. Um, how would someone write about your life for a magazine or a newspaper? Actually, um, somebody uh, wrote about my life a little bit and described it in a few um, uh, phrases, which is um, that I'm a fighter, uh, I'm stubborn, uh, I'm a successful person in what I want to do. The reason in the success is because I don't go in any area that I am not able to excel in it. I know my capabilities and I will do my best. If I want to do something, I will do my best to, to succeed there. So uh, people will say that I am a fighter. That's what, what they say about me. Okay. What animal are you most like? I'm like a tiger, a persistent like a tiger, uh, and very strong. Uh, and as I said, the people say that the lion is the strongest animal in the jungle, but I think it's the tiger is the most powerful animal in the jungle because lions retrieve from their uh, kill but well, I don't want to say kill it's the target but uh, tigers don't they don't retrieve and I would never retrieve there is no U-turn for me okay and can you um, explain how your business um, looks at differences in culture well, it's a very good question because Silica International uh, is international. Uh, we deal uh, trade internationally and we are translation, we offer linguistic support, so we rely on other cultures and other languages and our uh, basically, um, we are very diverse basically. We rely on other people to uh, offer us the service. And we offer the service, we help people from other cultures and other languages and other regions to uh, support them with their language, their language needs. So basically we are, we have to um, be diverse, we have to love diversity, equality as well. Uh, we, we are, we consider everybody is um, equal, we don't have any discrimination against um, gender, age, uh, color, race, anything that we always deal with people uh, on uh, performance and that is the only thing that we basically measure in people, not where they're from. And we rely on, on uh, diversity, that's how we thrive, that's how Silica works. Uh, in terms of training in the multilingual uh, language, uh, if we offer multilingual courses, or uh, offering the services uh, and linguistic support. So we rely on people to give us that. We don't speak all the languages. So we get people from other cultures, other backgrounds to offer us the services. So we have to be, to give them, I mean, we value them. We value the people we support and we value the people that support us. Excellent, thank you for that, Haifa. Uh, if people want to know more about Salika International, how can they contact you or, or how do they get more information about Salika International? Well, Salika International have a website which is um, here. It's in, uh, actually, it's embedded in our logo. So that is www.silikaie.com. This is our uh, domain name. So they could uh, get into the website and all the telephone numbers there, all the... Uh, emails and uh, the addresses and everything, uh, the, our company number, our VAT number, everything is listed in the website so they could uh, learn a, a great deal of information about Silica uh, through that. Thank you very much, Ava. Thank you for your information today. And all, Thank all you, Philip. It was a very good Thank interview. You. Thank you very much for that.